In children's cartoons that deal heavily with fantasy or sci-fi, there is often a struggle between expanding upon the lore of the show and the need to fill in the background with fantasy elements that help set the scene. This is definitely the case in the new Disney show The Owl House, where each episode has had moments of important lore, or at least the hints of it, but so far the majority of the fantasy elements that we actually encounter have been rather random. They help make the fantasy world seem magical, but there was an intention or thought put into why these creatures are the way they are and how they fit into the bigger world around them. They could be entirely replaced, and it would have no real effect on the story or how we see the world. The most recent episode, The Intruder, gave us quite a bit of lore to the more serious elements the show has been hinting at, so today we're going to dive in and try to break them all down and along the way, perhaps we may be able to answer one of the most interesting questions the show has presented to us so far, who exactly cursed Eda the Owl Lady? Don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as leave a comment telling us your interpretation of the information we've received so far. In this new episode, Luce finally convinces Eda to try and teach her a spell. Ida is still skeptical because Luce is a human, of course. In this world, witches are an entirely different species with their own physical distinctions from humans. Not just humans who come from a magical bloodline like we've seen in most fantasy settings such as Harry Potter. Witches are able to cast magic by drawing circles of light in the air, something they can only do thanks to a special pouch in their heart that creates a magical bile. I would imagine that this bile is a limited resource that gets expended as they use magic, which means that a character like Ida could lose the upper hand in a fight if she casts too many spells in a period of time before getting a chance to recharge. Even a half-witch like Luce's new friend from school seems to have this bile pouch that allows her to access these magics. Willow is only a half-witch, she says, but we are unsure what the other half of her may be. Humans don't exist on the Boiling Isles, and she herself is surprised to see a human like Luce, so we can probably rule that out. Luce, being fully human, does not create this bile in her heart, which means she seemingly can't perform magic the way that witches do. It is revealed that witches used to have an alternate way of doing magic before they could start drawing the circles of light in the air, but Ida was never taught what those methods were, and were unsure if they would even work for humans anyways. Ida ultimately passes out from her tiredness, and Luce tries to steal what appears to be a magic potion of hers that she believes is the real source of her power. The Owl House is attacked by a strange owl-like monster, and it is soon revealed that the monster is a cursed version of Ida, and the potion was actually a daily sort of medicine that stops her from transforming. King reveals that demons with dark eyes tend to be sensitive to light. Hopefully a piece of lore that won't just be convenient to this particular episode and comes back to play in future episodes as well. Luce was trying to learn a spell to make balls of light earlier, but being human, she was unsuccessful. She realizes, when her broken phone replays the video of Ida casting the spell, that within the circle she draws, there are invisible symbols that they weren't able to see before. Only the broken version of the video seems to show it. The implication is that the circle is the one element that all spells have, and the symbols within the circle are what translates the magic into a specific intention. The bile from a witch's heart seems to give them the ability to channel the ideas or symbols into the circle without actually having to draw it. It may even be subconscious. Ida may not actually know what, that these symbols even exist within the circle, but it is her intentions and thoughts when drawing the circle that fill in the gaps for her. If you were to draw that circle and the symbols inside of it manually, such as with a marker on a physical surface, it will still cast the spell. This is apparently how witches did spells long before they discovered they could just draw the circle in the air, and Luce can do it too. However, the circle immediately burns away and can't be used again without her drawing it on another surface, meaning that Luz won't have the benefit of pre-making permanent talismans that can cast these spells whenever she needs them endlessly. This makes the show a sort of inverse of the popular anime Full Metal Alchemist, a show where the magic system is based on characters drawing specific symbols in a circle to manipulate their surroundings. The main character of the show has developed the ability to use this magic system without drawing a circle, however. All he has to do is clap his hands while thinking of the symbols necessary. 
In the Owl House, it would seem that casting spells is not something that only witches can do. It is not the witches who are magical in that regard, but rather that magic is an element that exists on the Boiling Isles that these symbols and circles can draw out and manipulate to do specific things. The only thing that seems to distinguish the witches from the humans is that they can tap into magic using that bile, allowing a sort of magical shortcut to something all species have access to. So where exactly does the magic itself come from? Well, it is no secret that the Boiling Isles appear to be bones, and when we look at them from the distance, we can see that they are actually the decomposing remains of giant dead demons. It would seem that these giants were inherently magical creatures themselves, but after they died, smaller creatures began to form off of them, drawing the magic out of their remaining flesh and bones. In a way, it seems like all of the creatures of the Boiling Isles are parasites or bacteria that help decompose the demon's body. With all of this in mind, Luce is able to draw a light spell to blind Ida, force feed her a potion, and then turn her back to normal. Ida reveals that she was cursed as a young child, and the potion is what keeps her in her humanoid form. As of now, there doesn't seem to be any metaphor or symbolism behind her transformation, but there is hints that it may develop that way as the series progresses. At the end of the episode, she retreats back into her own mind and opens the door to a memory. A mysterious figure on the other side appears, and it is believed that this is the one who cursed her, but we can't see who it is. I believe that as the story develops, we will begin to see that this curse is a metaphor for some childhood trauma, with her transformation into a monster being symbolic of angry and emotional outbursts that often come with dealing with a serious trauma and the elixir being a way to bottle up Ida's emotions instead of dealing with her past therapeutically. I haven't seen any hints from within the show for who this character might be, but if we look at earlier promos from the season, we see that Ida does have a sinister looking sister, and it would appear that their relationship is strained at best. It's likely that she is the one who cursed Ida for one reason or another, or perhaps that their strained relationship will just be a symptom of a bad family dynamic where one of the parents, or a distant but older relative, is actually responsible for cursing Ida. For now, the sister seems to be the most likely culprit, but she is at least a link to who may be responsible if not her. This episode was exactly what we needed to really hook in the viewers for the more long-term storytelling. While no big villain has been revealed yet, and perhaps never will be, we see what was hinted at back in the first episode, that there is a deeper story for Ida that will become a series-long conflict for our characters. In Steven Universe, almost everything we learn from the gems or any of the sci-fi elements surrounding the story were taken very seriously by the show's staff and played a bigger role in how these aliens functioned and how the story progressed. There were a few episodes early on, like the one where Steven time travels, that don't really make a lot of sense to the rest of the story, but those were pretty early on before the show had really fine-tuned its plan. Steven Universe had the benefit of taking place in a human world, however, in a town with normal people that the gems just happened to live in. Everything we learn about the gems is slowly introduced to us throughout the series as Steven gets deeper into their lives and deeper into outer space. The Owl House, however, starts with Luce entering a magical world, and they have to emphasize that magical world in order to really sell the setting. Developing the world in a way that everything in the background will have significance later on is very difficult and not very time efficient. There is a reason Steven Universe never showed us more than a few glimpses of Homeworld, and when we finally spent an entire arc there, things suddenly became vague and rather generic because it takes a lot of time and energy to build an entirely new planet with real intentional thought to how that world would work. The majority of time goes in developing the actual story presented to the audience, leaving very little left over to work on those background details. In the Owl House, no humans exist on the Isles, and the show doesn't want to restrain themselves by creating boring non-fantasy characters for their amazing fantasy world. At the end of the day, this is a good middle ground. While these funny-looking creatures will never have crazy theories explaining their functions in the Boiling Isles, the way we do about every single gem we see in Steven Universe, they do help strike a unique balance of making sure that we know that this is a fantasy world with more to be explored. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.